for me, the biggest, I guess, trait that I have that kind of led me to it is my rebellious nature. Um, just because it is something that kind of freaks people out mm-hmm. at first, you know, and it's, I want to challenge people's, you know, their norms, their everyday, you know, like to get them questioning, like, all right, like, oh, that's beautiful. What is that? Oh, it's human hair. Like, and then like people hand it back to me or they don't <laughs> even want to touch it most of the time. I'm like, okay, like. <laughs> Typically, it was made while the uh, member was living, just kind of a keepsake. But it was very popular during like the Civil War in America, just because it was right before photography. So that's where we see most of the pieces from America. I think. Things that are out of the ordinary are the only things that really can help you change your perspective. So, you know, like you have to kind of question. So it's like, all right, well, why why does society feel that, you know, hair is so beautiful when it's on our head, mm-hmm. but the second it, you know, disconnects from the body, it's kind of considered disgusting or, you know, weird, you know, yeah. and it's like, well, why is that? Where does that come from? So the whole point of my art is to kind of get people to question something as simple as hair. biggest part of the tradition of it back in the Victorian days is that women would gather together and they would make these keepsakes. So it wasn't just you went to an artist and purchased a piece. Like you would make the hair keepsake and then you would send it to a jeweler to set for you. But the women actually were the ones that, that did it at home. But it takes practice just like anything, but you know, it also takes kind of a natural creative ability to be able to see hair as a work of art.